Right, hello guys, glad I have you on board again. And today, these are very troubled times. And even though all the headlines are pointing out to a crash, I'd like to have more of a balanced approach. Looking at the data that I have in front of me, uh, I have one very big explanation more than anything else. I don't know what the hell's going on. I've been trying to find reliable answers with data supporting it, rather than just spreading out ideas out there on social medias. But to be honest, either that comes from liquidation numbers, uh, all of these things, nothing tends to be explaining what we've experienced today. So I have few options that might be coming along the way within the next few days. The first one being, we don't know what the hell's going on, but it's certainly not liquidations. So it must be something else. So either this thing is going to keep on going much, much, much bigger than it is, because looking at the current data, we are far below the liquidation numbers that we've had on the 4th of December, which was just a very narrow type of liquidation. The biggest ones that we've had last summer was $10 billion. And looking at the very unlikely probability of what just happened releasing the next 40, the latest 48 hours, I would say $10 billion is a bare minimum. So no liquidation coming along the way for what happened. So it is not due to futures leverages being liquidated that has drove prices to this area. So it must be something else. So either there is a fundamental reason for this, which I still cannot find. So either some big whale or big fact finger, whatever, has just been selling some Bitcoins. But I've been looking at on-chain data. I see nothing either there as well. Though it, there is a big problem, I rarely face these kinds of things because I see absolutely dangerous technical difficulties, meaning that whatever happened is technically very, very unlikely and it shouldn't have happened, but though of course everything can happen. But normally when such kind of low probability stuff tend to show up, well in that perspective we generally have some kind of an answer coming along with it just to, I don't know, spread opium to the people. We're just going to tell them this is due to liquidation or whatever. And yet I've been trying to figure out what the motive is or what is the headline going to be spread out there to explain somehow whatever happened. Nothing comes out of it. Meaning that even those who are trying to generally give answers to the questions are not finding answers either. So it looks like something happened. It's unexplainable and everyone is trying to catch up on what happened. So either we're going to get the answer, so-called answer within the next few days that will explain all of that big mess. Or my personal stance is that there is no explanation. This is no speculative collapse. Otherwise, we would have had enormous amount of liquidations. We would have had enormous traded volume, which is not the case. The volume is pretty much standing to the previous things that we've experienced multiple times in the past. So looking at data okay real reliable data look at this volume i mean this is really low volume on the big headline projects no significant drawdowns what the fuck is going on i don't understand what i see is prices doing something they weren't supposed to do i mean technical assessment and technical readings of probabilities is my goddamn job i've been doing it for very long so when something comes out of the ordinary that big, it really surprises me. So either there is a rational explanation to this, or this is chaos, which is another second option. But option number three is that I don't think this is market manipulation either, but I don't trust the prices that I have in front of me. So the feeling that I have today is I don't know what's happening, but I don't believe it. So I have troubled mindset today. Because I also know that more than anything else, you must trust what you see. You trade what you see. But the problem is all the data that I see doesn't point to the things I see. So I have a big problem. I would like this data to support the price drops. I'd like to see enormous volume traded because the levels that have been crossed are technically absolutely crucially significant. So. There is no rational explanation of technical analysis explaining why the volume is so low, why the liquidations are not there. It looks like we've attempted to liquidate, but nothing happens. So either we're going to go way further than that to trigger those liquidations. And in that perspective, the party hasn't even yet started. Or option number two, 
This is random chaotic events, which means the significant time frames candle closes, being the weekly charts and the monthly charts as we assessed very clearly on the latest updates, are the ones that are going to settle this thing. Meaning that we will not be able to handle weekly candle closes in the nearby areas, we will rebounce by tomorrow evening, and probably rebounce even further down, uh, further up uh, by the weekly and by the monthly candle close. Or oh, option number three, the bubble really did pop. And I was among the dumbest ones who fell for it. But in that perspective, I still have a lot of problems with this. Nothing suggests a bubble has been at play. I'll take a few minutes to show you the difference between a bubble and a market that is trending. And there is not a single technical evidence supporting that this was a bubble. Not even to mention the adoption phase and the adoption curves. Nothing suggests we're in the bubble. So I do not like to have that radical type of answers. You know me, I'm generally more in shaded gray territory. This is why I'm having a hard time today. My mind tells me that I do not trust what I see. My eyes tell me it's still happening though I have a huge conflict of interest. So let me be real clear about what I actually decided to do today. So I'll stick to the conclusions because talking for an hour long about these things. So let me be real clear. I'm just as lost as you probably are. I cannot find any reliable technical or fundamental information supporting this price drop. I do not see any reliable metrics of crossed levels, volume or liquidation that may support these and short, uh, these short term events. All I see is either chaos, but I've seen chaos throughout the 10 years experience that I have in the market. I've never seen such a thing. Markets dropping 40% in 48 hours in background bullish trends, breaking significant levels of supports without even triggering a bit of a volume. I do not understand what I have in front of me. I've never seen such a thing, though probably I'll learn a lesson within the next few days. Though a bit of humility is that first things first, I do not make radical decisions today, but I had to do something. These kinds of things are the firsts I've ever came across in 10 years experience in the market. So I also know one thing, that rare events are generally opportunities. So the first things I've done today is that I have some spare cash for events like that, irrational stuff in which I do not overthink things. I do not have explanation. I do not understand. And I never try to understand. The only thing I know is that out of 10 years of trading, I've never come, I never came across to such high level of, I don't know what that is. And I don't try to figure out. All I know is that I have some cash available for this. So I've already spent my previous taking profits on the major supports multiple days ago. But today, well, I took on my cash. I took on my savings accounts and all of the money that I spare for rare occasions, because I think we'll live in a rare occasion. Of course, I haven't spent all that money. I took 20% of that cash and bought some things. The things that I bought are AVAX, uh, which I was waiting for dip retracements, and I finally got attractive prices on AVAX. So patience has paid on this one. I also got myself into uh, buying a bit more Nexos, just a little bit of them, okay? Very little bit, so Nexo is insignificant in terms of volume expressed. Solana has been my major bid. Uh, so, uh, let me be, uh, no, Adams I haven't reinforced. Uh, ETH, I already have a lot of them. So, I've got on Bitcoin, Solanas, AVAX, and a bit of Matic, if my memory is right. And that's, everything about it. I'm not touching anything else. Okay, so that is what I did. Now we're going to look at data suggesting why all of this thing is not a bubble. Okay, and in the end, okay, I'll explain what I'll do with the rest of the portfolio, all of the limited exposition I have, all of the less than 2% uh, exposition, like the thetas who've been absolutely hammered, we are 50% below my entry prices. So of course, thetas, Filecoin's investment strategies have been absolutely uh, uh, wrecked. Because of course, remember that I think I've gone in into these prices and the first profit taking and validation levels were to be at $120. And the plan was also to make an assessment by the end of that year by the end of 2021, trying to figure out if the market did validate, did nothing, or learned and pushed towards invalidation level. Well, the answer is clear and neat. We have pushed toward invalidation levels, so 
The video was there to prove it, okay? Uh, uh, what I said back then is that I'm gonna have to settle for a choice. The choice is either I will take the money out because I need the money and it's better invested somewhere else, which is not the case, or I'm just gonna live it the way it is and be real patient, but I also know that the market is going to crash. So this market is on the risk for a crash down pattern, meaning that it's gonna take way longer to recover. So I'm willing to handle for this. I would have been able to buy with much cheaper prices, but do not ever think it that way in markets, okay? You're not there to make the best of you. You're just there to make at least the best possible decisions. So you're not gonna make the best choices every time. You're just gonna try making the best of what you could do back then with the information you had back then. Risk limitations. I have no problem saying that I do not regret my buying entry, but on Filecoins, I've been doing a very dangerously bad assessment back then, saying that all the coins were already diluted and circulating, not to account for the crazy amount of inflation that there is on the FICON network. So very bad fundamental analysis that I've made. And of course, when you make mistakes, you will likely pay for it, which is exactly what is happening now. If I made my due diligence analysis back then, Filecoin, I would probably not have bought, but you know what? I would be buying it right now. So of course I did the mistake. I'm coming up for it. I'm not a perfect person. I do make mistakes. I will just come up for this one. I could have made a better choice. I still think the one I've made is not that bad. So patience is key in trading. Ficoin is still a very interesting project for the future, but I do understand now that it's going to offer much cheaper prices than the one I got in. And more importantly, it's gonna take way longer than expected to actually reach out potential validations. So we'll make an updated version of Filecoins and Theta investment eventually later down the road, but understand that right now the market will stick to the headliners. I do not change my plan. We've recorded a video a few days ago saying that there are two plans for Bitcoins and that all coins, basically the video recorded yesterday was saying that we still have to split the forecast into two major scenarios depending on what Bitcoin will do. And if Bitcoin reaches out the moving averages, then the likelihood to have a big massive weekly range is going to change things in the perspective that only the background trending assets, those who have very high demand due to uh, uh, the adoption phase and so on. So I'm still sticking to the plan. I think the AVAX Adams links uh, uh, polka dot will be the only ones available to go all time highs this year. And only if they truly get the demand that I've been forecasting, which is of course speculative. So it doesn't come without risk taking but to be honest, the big question mark is regarding all the rest of the coin. They are, most of them, going to be hammered this year because if there is a big range, then the money will inevitably flow back into the big assets. And in order to maintain valuations of the big assets into this range, meaning that the low cap stuff will likely be absolutely destroyed. So the K shape we've talked about in which 80% of the coins will likely go into the downside of the K, well, this 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 decision is starting to be made already very few projects will be able to gain this year lots of projects will start to hold down but very very much more projects will just be destroyed because they never were meant to do anything they just try to compete in very very competitive markets but this is the reality most of the assets are meant to go to zero within the next two years we might just have pressed on the accelerator button and made it more quicker and quicker and more dangerous for those who were speculating with leverage. But remember, I do not see liquidation levels reaching skyrocketing levels. So I do not understand what happened. It might just be chaos. And we could just erase all of this in the next 48 hours. So pay attention to the weekly close first and the monthly close then. For those who have midterm to long-term portfolio exposition, nothing changes until these candles are closed. And things could radically change until then. Okay. Now, technicals. I'll show you what a bubble is, okay? So take the quick example of Apple versus Amazon, which is one of the biggest misunderstandings now and one of the reasons why I absolutely do not understand what the market is doing. Apple is, meaning, is meant to crash, but absolutely, literally crash. It is a bubble and people yet are selling Amazon. I mean, take Amazon, has been losing 6% on Friday and probably will lose more on Monday. Apple's been barely losing 120, uh, 1 and 20%. 
So it's really absolutely crazy. What's been happening within the latest 48 hours is like taking logic and market risk limitations in general and just doing the opposite of it. Like the money has been flowing into the most dangerous assets ever, the biggest bubble of all time, Apple, and it's been flowing out of the riskiest assets which will provide growth within the next few weeks and months. It's incredibly stupid. I've rarely seen such level of stupidity in 10 years experience in the market, but I also know that stupidity is beyond any rational limits. So it can go infinite. So I do not certainly take the risk of leveraging my positions and going all in or whatever stuff that is. I know it is about time to settle down, calm down, take some distance with the market, but I really needed to jump in with cryptos. With cash, no leverage, but I had to do something. Future will tell if that was a good or bad investment strategy. So uh, please don't try to copy, okay? Though Apple, let's zoom it out, okay? I'll show you the difference between a bubble and a market uh, and a, a nuclear market. The market can be excessive in multiple ways, okay? A market excess is not a bubble, okay? A bubble is a market excess that can't be explained any other way and that is not supported by value. Let me give you the definition. The definition of a bubble is that the distance between the moving average and the price will go parabolic without nearly any explanation supporting it. Just to make it clear and clean, okay? The prices we're in, meaning that the last support was January 2019, okay? And it is, okay, four times below, five times below. So it is absolutely crucially dangerous. This is where the value is still. The value is by definition the moving average. So the last known value for Apple is approximately $40. It's currently priced up to $180. First factor, going irrationally away from moving averages and durably. Then the context goes absolutely crazy. This is what we have, meaning that the value isn't nearly rational at all. We meaning that all of these 50% context lines, which are supposed to give us average prices, are absolutely not meaning anything, meaning that the average price of this thing is the moving average itself. And this is where we're going to go back over time. The second element is that volume do not support prices. Remember that the value comes out of trades. The more trades there is, the more the value settles over time. So we have been printing a hell of a lot of candles. These are monthly fucking candles. But look at this, it hasn't been supported by a single bit of volume, meaning that whatever has been happening until we were trading 50% uh, $50 back then, and even at $50, the volume is absolutely invisible. There is no volume supporting that trend, so there is no value at all supporting any of this. And we're gonna go back to the volume for these kinds of assets. This is a bubble, and when it will pop, no one will be there to buy. This is what you need to understand. Okay, then there is a difference. Look at Amazon and look at Amazon's volume. You see the difference? The prices may look the same and the dumb eyes might be seeing just like a similarity and might say, oh, Amazon is popping the bubble and, and Apple definitely is the strongest candidate. Let me tell you this, this is my fucking job to figure out where the value is and where the risk limitation is. There is far less risk buying Amazon today than there is holding Apple. But the prices tell a different story. So I do not understand what the prices have been doing within the latest 48 hours, but it's gone absolutely oppositely to any rational metrics of risk limitation and value, which is normally the definition of markets. Markets are supposed to rationally, or more or less rationally, price in stuff. We do not know the future, so we of course have to oscillate across value and print some volume that will set the value over time. Amazon, I can give a value to this asset. I know where to buy it and where to sell it. Apple, I do not know anything about it. It has no intrinsic value looking at the prices that we print today. And this is the difference between a market that goes parabolic with value, because actually Amazon is not a bubble. It's going excessive, but there is a reason for this excess. The reason is that we have broken multi time frame trends in November 29. Uh, 2009 so multi time frame trends will always create these kinds of excess on the higher time frames so what i have in front of me for amazon is absolutely normal but that doesn't mean i'm going to buy this support the buyable prices for amazon are more likely over the 2000 mark but does it mean 
Amazon will remain bullish or at least range, meaning that its value is where the price stands, it definitely is the case. There is volume supporting this trend, not the case for Apple. Okay, so now that you see the difference between a bubble and a market trend, well, let's see if we were in a bubble for cryptos, because actually that's what the prices tells us. They tell us this is a bubble. We might have bought something that will never be there in the future. It was just some kind of a storytelling stuff. Well, look at the volume for Bitcoin. Do you see a bubble? I don't see any of it. Look at Solana, for example. Does it look like a bubble? Yeah, it could be a bit more, because in here the volume distribution is much more scattered, meaning that and we've assessed that the other day on the altcoin thing, Solana is very likely going to have to range to bring up the volume into this area before being able to all-time high and sustain the value again. This is really the reality we have in front of us. I'm sorry guys, I've always followed the data. Is this the distribution of a bubble? It's not. It's the distribution of a trending market and a trend that will likely keep on going as demand is expected to still rise over the next few years. The valuation of these assets are crazily low. I mean, understand it that way. All of the valuation metrics in the crypto market tells us one thing. It might be volatile in the short run, but prices will be more expensive in the future, as long as there is demand for the project. So I'm not talking about the shittiest altcoins that have no intrinsic value because they have no demand. Okay, everything that's going to be demanded, the headliners and the top projects that have real utility already and which will likely have more in the future due to increasing demand of the adoption phases, well, these assets, I can hardly tell that there were bubbles and that they will just pop like they were nothing. There is still demand for these assets on a day-to-day -day basis to transactions or whatever demand there is for these things and utilities, and there will be more tomorrow. So. I disagree with what I have in front of me. But like I said, do not fight the market. So the market tells us a different story now because prices are very much likely all surged to the downside. So be smart. Understand that if you had long-term portfolios, there's nothing to change until at least we get the monthly candle close. And eventually we'll have to readjust the timings and we'll go for a pretty boring range on 2022 and nothing will ever happen and probably we'll recover out of 2023 or we'll have to readjust in between. But there is no radical actions to perform today. If you were trading with leverage, well, you have your stop losses and you will have to accept them if the market takes them down. That's the risk of trading. And just like I always tell you, chaos can eat at any time. What we have today fairly much looks like chaos to me. Don't see chaos as an opportunity unless you're experienced enough to do this. I do this because I always spare a bit of capital for these kinds of irrational, chaotic, very rare events. When I see them as an opportunity, I take some of that cash. Today, I took 20% of that cash in the market which is very limited. That still means I have 80% of the available extreme limitation kinds of cash available. So do I think the market is going to V-shape, bottom, whatever today? I don't know anything about it. So don't get me down this road, okay? That doesn't mean I sent you a buy signal today. All I'm saying is I don't know what the hell happens. Eventually we'll get an answer within the next few days. And until then, keep calm, hold on, and wait until we actually have some technical rationales to see if we have to change stance or not. Is it a bear market? Absolutely not. We need candle closes first. So far, so good. All that just looks like a chaotic event to me, something that we'll not even remember over the historical charts. The monthly charts, if we were to close this with a lower shadow candle, for example, no one would even remember it. So some days are remembered, some others don't mean anything. I think today is one day to be remembered in the short term because it very much likely is something I wasn't expecting and I've, ever, I've never seen such a thing in 10 years career. But if we zoom out to monthly charts, this is irrelevant. This is just chaotic structures. Let it be and wait for the monthly candle closes. Bye guys.